God's blessing. Of this sort are they 
which creep into houses and lead captive silly women laden with sins, led away with divers lusts, ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. The world as well as the church have become corrupted. And as the rapture approaches, Satan is scheming all he knows how. He's tearing up what used to be a rehabilitation or hospital, which is known as the church. He's corrupting it from the inside out. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, because we have become slaves to our flesh, you know, when you become a slave to your flesh, it becomes addictive. Just like a drug or alcohol, it becomes addictive. And you don't want to do the things that, you know, will be sacrificing for the spirit man. You want to do what the flesh wants you to do. And, you know, people who come into the church need rehabilitation. They need restoration. They need yeah. God right. to cleanse them of all impurities, right. which is the flesh. Amen? Amen. Amen. So many people turn away from God. Not just because of, you know, the things in the church, you know, the things that people do in the church, but because of there are so many versions of the truth. So many different religions and beliefs that have been twisted into misinterpreted understandings. So the word, so the world have decided to come up with their own beliefs. Now, the world, now there are different celebrities that have moved upon this as something called the 5% medallion. And what that is, is they wear it on their neck. And I believe it has six stars with the number seven in the middle. And if you see that, that is a belief that they carry and now that they are sharing with the world. Mm -hmm. And what that is, they believe that the black man is God and created the universe and is physically stronger and intellectually stronger and more righteous naturally. They believe that whiteness is weak, wicked, and inferior. Basically, just as a child who needs to be corrected. They believe that black people are the fathers and mothers of civilization, and that white men are the devil. The Christian God is nothing more than a ghost, and that's what they believe. Now, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I'm going to read 33 and 34 in the Amplified. It says, do not be so deceived and misled. Evil companionships, communion associations, corrupt and depraved, good manners and morals and character. Awaken from your drunken stupor and return to sober sense and your right minds and sin no more. For some of you have not the knowledge of God. You are utterly and willfully and disgracefully ignorant and continue to be so, lacking the sense of God's presence and all true knowledge of him. I say this to your shame. So people are walking around with no knowledge of God. They, they have heard of God and they know the things that he can do, but they are ignorant and they are naive and they are spreading truths that are not the truth. They are spreading beliefs that are not the right belief. Amen? Amen. And us as the people of God, when we try to correct them, they get offended. Mm. And they don't want really to hear your truth, but they'd rather hearken unto what they created in their own minds. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And if they feel singled out, then just like when you were in school or you're in the workforce, you are created, you know, you're broken off into teams. And if you feel that maybe you're singled out or someone doesn't want to work with you, you're like, okay, well, I'm going to go create my own team. That's what the world has done. They have created their own belief. Yep. They've created their own religion, abandoning all beliefs in God yep. and warnings against their fleshy and sinful desires. Which leads me to my next point, homosexuality and lesbianism, which is rising in the United States, all in all around America and all around the world. There have been several bills that have been introduced by the pro-homosexual politicians to ensure that the practice of homosexuality is a right protected by law. Yes. Included in these bills are statements affecting employers, renters, and schools. And they could possibly, they are now speaking of possibly, 
it being required to hire a quota of homosexuals and sensitivity training courses would be strongly urged in various workplaces. So now they are trying to move upon making it a law that they have to come in here and they, we cannot discriminate and we cannot say no, you cannot work on in ministry, you cannot get up on this pulpit, this pulpit and preach to people with, you know, their fleshly desires. You know, they're making it a law that we cannot turn them away. They have to get up here and preach the word of God. They have to, you know, they, we have to let them do what it is that they want to do in the church. Even, you know, a pastor that my father knows personally and mentored and had no clue about what was going on in his church, pastor that my husband and I know, he proposed to his first gentleman on the altar of the church. So there is no more respect for the altar of God. There's no more respect for the sanctuary of God because they're willfully going into the sanctuary and preaching that it is okay. Leviticus chapter 18 and 22 says, You shall not lie with a man as one lies with a female. It is an abomination. And they're justifying the word of God for what they want to do. The world has now created a Queen James Bible. Uh, and what the Queen James Bible is, if you don't know, it cleanses the Bible of all references related to homosexuality. Amen. Wow. Now many believe that homosexuality is not a sin, but rather a sexual orientation. People who continuously live in sin seek acceptance for their wrongdoings. They want the privilege to commit the sin without the consequence. Mm -hmm. So they justify it with the simple phrases like, the Bible is not a rule book, or the Bible is old and outdated. So there are things in there that we don't have to, you know, we don't have to abide by because it's old. You know, that was in biblical times. Mm -hmm. You know, but they don't understand the significance of the commandments that God gave us, the yeah. rules that we have to abide by. Yeah. They're ignorant to them, amen? So, what they don't know is, what they, oh, Corinthians, I'm going to read Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. You can turn there if you would like. They don't understand that there are consequences to their actions because they walk around the earth and they do what they want to do. And they don't care. And they don't understand that the things that happen around them are the consequences for their action. Amen? Amen. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9. And you can follow along. I'm going to read in the Amplified. Do you not know that the unrighteous and the wrongdoers will not inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God, do not be deceived, misled. Neither the impure and immoral, nor uh, idolaters, nor adulterers, nor those who participate in homosexuality, nor cheats, swindlers, and thieves, nor greedy graspers, nor drunkards, or foul-mouthed revilers, and slanders, nor extortioners and robbers will inherit or have any share in the kingdom of God. And what they want to do is they want to take their part out. They don't care about the murderers or, you know, the murderers or the robbers or the people who, you know, slander God's name. They don't care about all the next stuff. But the homosexuality part, they've taken it out. Now, what happens when the murderers decide, okay, well, if they can take that out the Bible, we can take out, take our part out the Bible too. Then what you have is a mass of different type of sins mm -hmm. coming together and saying, okay, let's create our own form of the Bible to where whatever sin we want to do, we can do it. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know how many people have saw the movie The Purge, but in the movie The Purge, the government created a law to where the people in the United States 
to commit any sin, any crime they wanted to for 12 mm. hours. Yeah. And people make movies like this, and what that creates is people who start to wonder, what if that happens? You know, that would be a good that would, that would probably be a good idea. It would probably be less time because for twelve hours people could just run rapping around the streets and do what they want to do. But you know, the government, you know, and the presidents and people, we'd be safe because we have the money and the resources to protect ourselves. Mm -hmm. Things like this is going on in the United States, and it's going around, going around around us, but we are so uneducated about the things that are going on. Right. And you know what? It's, it's only going to get worse. Yes. Yes. Amen. And it's a part of the devil's plan. Homosexuality and lesbianism is a part of the devil's plan to, de to destroy the intent that God created mm -hmm. for mankind. Amen. It's not just spreading in the world alone, but also in the church. There are gay churches that are forming. There are workers in ministry who are, open, you know, openly gay, or they are secretly. You know, there are pastors and kingdom leaders who are in secret. People who, you know, pastors who are getting married. You know, being with the same sex, it defiles the sanctity of marriage and stops natural reproduction between man and woman. And woman husband and wife. Amen? Amen? And not only that, but it brings confusion in the household. Because the children, whether they get donors or they adopt, the children have to see that. And so, you know, the children grow up in the world and in school and in public and they see, you know, families with a mother and a father, but they're now in the household with two women or two males and it becomes confusing. And then the spirit can transfer to the child. So then they grow up and the process starts all over again to where they only want to be with the same sex, same gender, because that's what they grew up with. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And the devil knows that the youth are the key to our future. Amen. They're the ones that will take the torch and build the world of tomorrow. Oh, yeah. And if the devil can manipulate them while they're young, he already knows what, they're, what they can potentially become when they're older, amen? amen? The different things that influence the youth of today, the music, movies, social media, school, at home, and even, sad but true, in the church, amen? amen. Music is powerful. Yes. It has the power to make or break your day. Sure, music yeah. is the doorway to a range of emotions Deep within yourself, it That's expresses right. how you feel in moments of joy yeah. and in moments of sadness. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. The, the enemy knows how to channel those emotions by putting subliminal messages in the songs, videos, and movies that the world produces. Mm -hmm. Many people don't believe it, but the theory of the Illuminati is real. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes, Demonic forces behind the industry are real. They seek to destroy the minds of the people, constantly shifting their minds to serve against the God that so graciously gives them second chances every single day. Amen? Yes. Amen. The word says, praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the ferment of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Yeah. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Yeah. Praise him yeah. with the psalm tree and harp. Yeah. Praise him with yeah. the temple and dance. Yeah. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Yeah. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Yeah. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. Yeah. Let everything that has breath praise yeah. the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Yeah. The world is turning music into something that it wasn't originally meant for. Music was meant to praise God, amen? And now they're turning music into a way to praise the devil and praise their own fleshly desires, amen? And there are more celebrities and actresses and actors who are coming forward and being blunt about who they serve. They want to serve the devil and they want it to be known. This is who I'm serving. I'm serving the devil because... It, by them saying and openly saying who they're who they're praising and who they're representing, it shows the world that hey, I got the riches, I got the fame, I got the glory. If you want to be like me, you know where to find me, and you know who I'm serving. Amen. Amen. They believe that selling their souls to the devil will bring them fame and riches in their life, but they are naive to the eternal life that awaits them in hell. 
They openly conversate about the spirits that possess them during performances that are sexual and demonic acts. And they know yes. they will attract young girls and boys that want to be popular and they want to feel beautiful. Amen. They want to feel accepted. They enforce drugs and, alco and alcoholism. Yes. They don't have the people's best interest at heart. And the top things they seek to accomplish is death. They seek to accomplish spiritual death, physical death, and mental. Amen? Amen. Constantly trying, trying to mock God and the purpose he has for the body of Christ. If you could turn with me to Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. Intentionally to mock God. Mm. 
And, you know, the devil seeks to poison the name of God so that people won't see how much God is real and how much he truly loves us. Yeah. Which is the reason why there is so much sin and chaos in the church today. Amen. There are people who purposely join churches just to fulfill a hidden agenda to destroy the vision of the ministry. Right. They destroy the unity within the congregation by yeah. gossiping yeah. and spreading rumors. Yeah. They try to break apart marriages in the church by pulling them to the side and telling them things that their spouse are doing and leading them to divorce, That's right. which is not right. right. And if you don't have anything, any positive advice for anyone, especially in a marriage or in a relationship, it's best to keep your mouth closed because of what the scripture says. What God put together, let no man put asunder. Amen? Amen. People don't realize that it's none of their business. Mm -hmm. Point blank. What happens in a marriage, marriage is between three people, God, the husband, and the wife. Amen? Amen. And by destroying a marriage, you are cursing yourself. How can you give advice to someone in a marriage that's going through marital things if you have never been married? And if you have not gotten what you have to say from God, stay out of the business of marital affairs. Amen? Amen. And the confusion starts with one person. The devil knows he can use. And it starts with one person speaking up about what theory that they have about what's going on in someone else's life. And then when that one person speaks up, another person speaks up about the way that they feel, and they join in and start their own theories about the matter. As soon as you know it, there is a mass of manipulation and disruption among the people, which causes an intense form of malice and anger that, virtu that virtually disintegrates the unification in the church. Amen? Amen. Then segregation begins, and that's where the cliques begin to form. Wow. No one wants to speak to anyone and that isn't a part of your group. And the visitors that come in don't feel welcome or comfortable enough to sit through an entire church service mm. because the atmosphere is polluted with hatred towards, towards another. Mm. And in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 through 32, it says, let all bitterness and wrath yes. and anger yes. and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God, for Christ's sake, hath forgiven you. People have forgotten scriptures like this because they don't read their Bible. And they don't know how to operate the love of God. Amen? So they come in here hating one another, and that's that's what the service becomes. It becomes a service of hatred instead of a service to glorify God. Amen? Amen. And which, this is what leads me to the dream that I had. And I'm closing. The dream that I had, I was in an ancient historic library with a young white boy. And I don't know who the boy was. I've never seen him before. But I had, I had a set of papers in my hand, and he had a set of papers. My set of papers had, my set of papers had on it the devil's plans and the schemes that he were that he was you know creating in the world. It had the set plans. And the boys' papers had how he was gonna go about working the plans, how he was gonna set it up. And his papers also had how there was like a diary, how the devil was so angry and so upset at the fact that God was going to win and he was going to lose. So when we read these papers, a cord started wrap, wrapping around his foot. And a demonic force began to drag him away. He started screaming. And instantly I reached out my hand towards him. As soon as I reached out my hand, the demon let go of him. And I pulled him up. And we ran into what looked like an office. And the boy disappeared in the dream. And it was just me walking into the door of the office. And there sitting there was Elder White and Deaconess Ridley. And I began to, I began to tell them about what the paper said. My paper said, you know, the plans and the schemes he had. But I believe 
that the reason why this boy got attacked was because the devil doesn't want us to know what he's planning and how he's going to go about doing it. He's already upset that we're going to get the victory. Yeah. But everything that he's doing while he still has time left on this earth, uh -huh. he's trying to do it in secret. Yeah. That's why so many people live in fear of what's called the Illuminati, but they don't understand that the Illuminati is being used by the devil. Mm -hmm. They're not into who God is and to who Satan is. So what the devil is doing is he's throwing names out there to make people fearful of man and not the supernatural. Amen? Amen. Amen. And as the people of God, it's time for us to take the blindfolds off. Amen? Yes. Some of us are walking around like we have all the time in the world. Yes. Walking around not knowing what's going on around us. Yes. We don't want to hear about demons because we're too scared. Yes. We don't yes. want to hear anything about the secular world because we're too holy and we're too sure. dignified. Yes. But what they don't understand is if we have young children or grandchildren or young siblings, this is what they're exposed to every day. And we have to educate ourselves and let them know of the dangers that they are exposed to every day. Amen? Amen. If you don't know anything, how can you get familiar with these people and how can you let them know of the dangers? Amen? We always hear that the rapture is soon to come, but do we really believe it? The signs are clear. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I'm going to read verse, six, verse 2 through 6. You don't have to turn. But it says, For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief yes, in the night. Yes. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, yes. as travail upon a woman with child. And they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, yes. that that day should overtake you as a thief. Right. Ye are all the children of light yeah. and the children of the day. Hallelujah. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Oh, oh, oh. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others, yes. but let yes. us watch and be, so, and be sober. We are to watch as well as pray, pray as well as watch, amen? Right, right, so yeah. that lets us know right then, we have to watch our surroundings. Yes. We have to watch yes. what's going on around us, amen? Yes. Right. We have to watch and cover our young children yes. because that's who the enemy is after. Yes. Yes. That's right. And, you know, these people, the Illuminati, the Masonaries, whoever they are, what they are establishing, establishing is the new world order, amen? amen? Which is eventually, they're going to take away the Bibles, sure any scripture, any people going around quoting scriptures will be either hung or, you know, yeah. burned alive, yeah. shot on sight, amen? Yeah. Anybody yeah. professing, you know, proclaiming the name of the Lord You're right. is going to die. You're right. You know? And in that moment, are you going to stand up and say, hey, for God I live, for God I die, take me right now because I know where I'm going. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People don't understand the seriousness of what's going around today. Yeah. But instead, you know, Everyone wants to preach about prosperity, right. but the churches of today are so blind to what the You're rapture right. really is. You're right. They don't know about the rapture. They're unlearned. Amen? Nobody. They don't know how to live holy. There are too many 